yellow just blew up in the house in my road. Gotta make it put it on. She don't like when clothes just left Concord. No care, like I was licking on booty in the whole lot of vagina. Eat a booze with some ice cream. She'll remember you. Ice cube, make a gym. She ever like the way do. Do sitting with the crew. I done get some food. I see you looking like you do. Had to make a move, make a move. I'm y'all, Slade Almighty, aka the Global Dark Skin Ambassador. <clears throat> Back with another Rikers Island story. I know I've been walking outside a lot, you know what I'm saying? Getting these vlogs in. I ain't came to the table. I ain't been doing enough like table stories in a minute. So I'm back at the table with another Rikers Island story. Now, this story is about how I've, I definitively learned once and for all 2008 Rikers Island, you don't ever, ever, ever judge a book by its cover. You can never tell how great, you can never tell the uh, the heart a man has by his stature. You can never judge a book by its cover because when you do, you can make an ass out of yourself. An ass out of yourself, just like the word Assumption got the word ass in it. You assume you make an ass out of yourself, all right? So we're going to take it to 2008 Rikers Island, C74. I'm in five main. Um, this is the school floor. So in the school floor, you could be whatever house you in. But of course, within your classroom is going to be inmates from other houses of course and like this was another way you know dudes mingle forge you know brotherhoods and friendships you know camaraderie blah 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 all that other stuff so now this wasn't when i first got to Rikers island this is maybe probably my third fourth month in so my whole my whole uh trial and error process of you know going through the drama you know, popping off on dudes and, and getting jumped. You know what I'm saying? I'm I'm in a good position now. I ain't got to worry about that no more. So I'm real comfy. So at this point, I'm on the school floor. I'm treating school just like how I would have been treating it in, in the town. Like I'm the class clown. I'm one of the smartest dudes in the class anyway. Plus, you know, this is, this is Rikers Island. Like, I'm somebody who went to Catholic school and then went to public school and then went to Rikers Island. So, you know, Rikers Island, even the smartest classes, they think we all dumb. So, I wasn't the only one, but, you know, I'm one of the smartest dudes in the class. So, I'm just I'm just joking around. You know what I'm saying? We, we you know, playing the dozens, cutting each other ass, all type of stuff like that. But I remember one lower. One lower had... I wasn't familiar. See, the dudes who ran one lower at this current point in time, they was in the dummy. They was in the dummy class. So I wasn't too familiar with them. But they did have a couple of their dudes that was on the team uh, and a couple day room dummies, right? And a couple dudes who wasn't necessarily on the team, but they was rocking, you know what I'm saying? Because they wasn't soft. And there's somebody who could vouch for them. It was a couple dudes like that. So. It was me. Um, like I said, um, the dudes that was running five man, they was in the dummy class too. You know what I'm saying? But it was me, a couple day room niggas from five man, like two dudes that was on the team. Um, it was a couple other dudes from three main that was good. They won day room, and then it was like one day room dummy from one lower, and it was like. Two bloods that was on the team and one lower. And then one day, one day, a little small, tiny, tiny crip dude. I forgot his name. But he was, he must have been like, I think he was payback or something like that. I don't, uh, I don't know. I don't know. You can't, you can't quote me on that. But um, I remember this short little dude. He couldn't have been taller than he couldn't have been taller than 5'3", five, 5'4". Five, you know what I mean? 5'5", five, five might be... 5'5", five, five might be modest. 5'5", five, five might be generous on him. You know what I'm saying? But he was crit. He 
he came into Rikers Island and he was he was jacking he was jacking his crib shit hard. He was jacking it. You know what I'm saying? And um, I believe at the time, at the time it was one of those rare situations in one lower where a crib. A crip ran half the house, and then a blood ran half the house. So for a crip to run any half of any house and be running it with a blood, even though I didn't know who he was, he had to have been certified. So I guess, you know what I'm saying, he, um, I guess he already, you know, pressed the new crip dude and, and, and the new crip dude was certified or whatever, right? But even with that being said, it was still always tensions, you know what I'm saying? Like the like like a lot of times the bloods who was on the team, right? Or the bloods who was rocking, mind you, this is the era where we still had the chairs. So if you was on the team, you was fighting for chairs. You was fighting for chairs, you know what I'm saying? You was going two, three rounds. If you was allowed to go two, three rounds, you know what I'm saying? Unless you just totally got whooped out, whooped out, whooped out that first round, you know what I'm saying? Um, dudes was fighting for chairs. So you had Bloods fighting Bloods, Chris fighting Crips, Latin Kings fighting, uh, Latin Kings, not Bloods fighting Bloods. I mean, sometimes Bloods fight Bloods or Crips fighting Bloods, Bloods fighting Crips for their chairs. Um, Latin, uh, Latin King, a, a, a chair might be up and running and the Lion King might go against the blood for it. You know what I'm saying? Not for B purposes, but strictly for A. Listen, this is the highest, this is the highest esteem. This is the trophy for being on the team and being the highest ranking oppressors. You feel me? But like I said, going back to the school floor, in comes this short crypt dude. Now, the crypt dude mind his business you know what I'm saying? Like, 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 he wasn't a troublemaker, but at the same time, he had an energy about himself. He had an energy about himself, which was, he not going for nothing. He not going for nothing. But at the same time, I'm looking at him, I'm like, he tiny. I mean, and then you know me, as a fan, this is like what we do. Like, we size people up, and we start telling ourselves, like, I can take it. I beat the shit out of him. So I'm saying it to myself, I'm like, I... I reckon if it ever had to go that way, you know what I'm saying? Just like anybody else. Anybody else when you out in the town or you in jail, you know what I'm saying? And half the time, these would be people who you think about that to yourself, but you end up being cool with these people and it never even comes to fist the cuffs. Merry fist, miss, you feel me? But like I said, he chilling. In days is going by on the school floor. Um, he getting cool with everybody. But I'm noticing... I'm noticing for a couple days straight that the one lower dudes is coming in and he having like friction with this other blood dude from one lower, right? Who has a chair. Now this dude, this dude looks like, this dude looks like the bald low Caesar dude who, who tried to run down on train. And don't be a menace in South Central while drinking your juice in the hood. And then he got stomped out and got flattened out, right? The same dude who basically played the same kind of character in um, uh, Minister Society, the same dude, the same dude who took advantage of that girl in the Players Club, the same, he looked exactly like that dude. And he was like, kind of swole, kind of swole. I remember he may have been like an inch or two shorter than me, but he was like kind of swole. And like he was on the team. He had a chair. And 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 he had like a, a boastful nature about him. He had like a boastful nature about him. I think he might have been from Queens. This is one of those dudes who he rubbed me the wrong way. So I kind of like stayed out of his way. I stayed out of his way because it's as simple as this. He's a blood, a high-breaking blood. If I personally got into it with him, I'm just going to get jumped. I'm just going to get jumped. It ain't like I got some people from some other gang that's going to hold my back. Mind you, this is early on in my Rikers Island bed. It's like, it's me. I'm literally the only GFC dude in Rikers Island. GFC, GFC didn't mean much to people who never heard about it and wasn't from the Bronx. It didn't mean much at that time, you know what I'm saying? Like, um, 
GFC didn't start becoming a thing and a mainstay on Rikers Island C74 till maybe like three, four months after that. You know what I'm saying? Like we started getting deep. We started getting deep. Once I got like to the mods and ran into T-Roy and, and you know, Bow Wow, Bow Wow turned GFC and then Drew Ski and you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? But um, I noticed that they having friction, like the little Crip dude and the blood dude is having friction, but the Crip dude is like, he really not trying to have an issue with him. He really not trying to have an issue with him, but the blood dude is just like pressing it's just like pressing the issue, like always saying slick stuff. Like if he happened to be talking about whatever crypt thing that he happened to be talking about, whatever it had to do with it's a conversation he was having with somebody else who was crypt, somewhere else or something like that, or something happened out in the town, the blood dude would always have some slick to say. And I'm watching the little crypt dude, and mind you, he's like tiny, like not only short, He's like tiny, like he had to be, he couldn't have been more than like 115, 120 pounds, if that, short. And he had like a little mini afro, like little, like little dark skin dude, you know what I'm saying? Like little dark skin dude, but short, tiny. But he not, he not like appearing to be soft at all. But I'm watching, I'm like, they're gonna fight. I'm like, they're gonna fight. I see it. I'm like, yo, the blood dude really got static with this crip dude just because he crip. Just because he crip, you feel me? So they they fake getting into it, but not getting into it. But then one day, one day, the blood caused the crip a hardback. Just out the blue, randomly. Mind you, I said the crip never, ever, ever went out his way to disrespect the blood dude at all right at all at all so once he says hardback it's like it's like in um it's like in how high it's like in how high when um when he was like with all due respect sir suck my right and today i was like Ooh, right so <laughs> everybody else everybody else in the classroom was like Ooh, right so the crimp dude gets up like he about to pop that bottle on the blood right right but then his man stops him his man stops him and sits him back down, but now they arguing and all of that. And then the blood dude is like, "Come on, man, you don't, you don't, you don't want this. You don't want this. I beat you and every crip up in the house. Like, stop playing with me. Stop playing with me. Stop playing. Blah, say, blah, say, blah, blah. Right? So then the crip is like, "Yo, you know what? Since you keep acting like you want a problem, when we get back to the house, let's fight then." So then the blood is like, "All right, cool. I'm gonna beat you up, beat you up." He like, "No, let's not just fight." Let's fight for your chair. I want your chair. I want your chair. So once again, it's like, oh, I'm like, oh, he got hard. I'm like, yo, he got hard. Even though he about to get beat up. Because I'm immediately I'm looking at him. I'm like, yo, this dude literally works out, got muscles. He's bigger than this dude. You know what I'm saying? He looks intimidating. And I'm looking, I'm like, this is just a small payback crit. I'm like... He got heart. If he lucky enough, he put up a fight. But I'm like, this is this is a David versus Goliath where Goliath is going to win. You feel me? But I'm looking at the crypt dude. It's no fear in his face. He like, yo, listen. I'm going to take your chair now since you think you tough. So mind you, I'm in five man. So I don't know. I don't, I'm not able to see what's going to happen. But... Class is over, everybody leave for the night. Everybody come back the next day. Everybody come back the next day. We come in the next day. The, the little crip dude comes in, right? He's smiling. He's smiling. His man's are smiling. The crip dude has no mark on his face, right? No mark on his face. Um. He, he he he's being a little bit boastful now without overdoing it, right? But he ain't got no mark on his face, and he feels even more his energy is like even more confident than it was the day before, right? So so 
The blood dude walks in. The blood dude, he looked like his lip was swollen. He got like a speed knot on his head and all of that. And in my in my mind, I'm like, damn. <laughs> I'm like, damn, you got washed. I'm thinking maybe he got jumped or something. I'm eavesdropping to the crimps and all of that. They talking and all that. And he like, yeah, man, you know, I beat him up. Beat him up, yeah, I got the chair. And then I do some asking around. I do some asking around like, yo, the crimp beat up the blood dude. And now he's sitting in the chair. I'm like, how did this happen? They got the one on? He's like, yeah, they got the one on. And it turned out, it turns out that the crimp could box. The crimp could box. And he put the McGriddles. He put the McGriddles on the blood who apparently could not fight that well. But the only thing he could do was throw haymakers. Throw haymakers. That was his thing. Throwing haymakers, trying to knock you out. But the Crip, the Crip was like a scientist. Like his hands was like, was scientific. You feel me? So all he did was move out the way. Bob, weave. Boom. Duck, he was apparently talking greasy the whole time. So they fighting, fighting, fighting. And then eventually, eventually he gave him a speed knot first, cracked him in the forehead, right? And then eventually he busted his lip. And once he started bleeding, they like, yo, listen, man, the fight is over, man. Y'all about to make it hot and, and the whole the whole house is gonna be in trouble. And now apparently they're supposed to get round two in that night, that new night, but the blood was so upset and embarrassed about what happened, he pops the bottle on the crib just randomly. Like, I don't know, maybe uh, maybe um, the sergeant or whoever was there, he pops the bottle off just randomly and gets packed up out the house, you know what I'm saying? So a loser, so a loser. And then the crib remained in that house for whatever amount of time he was there. Cause, Cause I remember he stayed. I think he went home from court, maybe like a month or two later. But he remained in the chair, and had his own chair, and was on the team, right? Which sparked a lot of animosity with a lot of the other bloods in the house. But it's like he won it fair and square, you know what I'm saying? So he had a spot on the team until he left one lower, and that's how that story went, man.